My guest this morning is Sue Edwards. She has written a book. Sue, thank you for joining us this morning here on Upfield FM. Um, so that we get this sort of thing into perspective, you've written this book. It's called Memoirs of a WAF. Can you explain exactly what a WAF is? Because I'm sure there's an awful lot of people out there that haven't got a clue. Yes, morning, John. Um, yeah, a WAF is um, it's short for um, Women's Auxiliary Air Force, I believe. Um, and they started in 1939, I believe. So by the time my mum joined in 1942, it was already been going a few years and the war was already well on its way. So Now, these diaries turned up. Tell us how they yes. actually turned up. Um, my parents uh, moved about two years ago um, to a small flat about a quarter, quarter of a mile away from their old house. And it was uh, obviously a big, a big move. And amongst uh, all the things that they had to throw out or whatever, she found her diaries tucked away in a little drawer. Um, she'd completely forgotten they were there. Um, and they'd been there, what, 60-odd years, so a long time. Um, and... Uh, we were helping her to sort through her things and she realised what her diaries were and she said to me, um, they're getting very tatty, a lot of them were very unreadable, so she said, you know, could we have a go at typing them up? Um, and they were diaries from uh, 1942 through to 47. Um, and I said, yeah, OK, let's have a look at them. And uh, she decided that rather than just giving the diaries to me and typing them up, because it was every single day she had written in her diary, so it was a lot of interesting information, she actually decided to write up her notes, um, which I took, um, you know, I started typing up and, t and started the book. Um, but she'd missed an awful lot of it out. She missed out a lot of details I thought were interesting. Um, so she gave me the diaries and I went through them myself. I went through every single day to see what was interesting and what wasn't. So I couldn't write a book um, just based on the notes themselves. I had to make it into something that was readable. And I thought, you know, this is too good just to give to the family. It's something that my mum was originally thinking of, just to make it a notes for the family. I said to her, why don't we do a proper book? And Because a lot of pe other people would be interested to read it. So she said, oh, do you think that's possible? And I said, oh, yes, of course it is. You know, I've got lots of contacts. I'm sure we can do it. I said, leave it to me and uh, see what we can do. And two years later, an awful Bless lot of hard book. work. <laughs> a lot of hard work, yeah. <laughs> a lot of research a lot of help and uh, literally got delivery from it this morning so i would imagine she left bits out that you found interesting because they were just run of the mill to her yes yes exactly yes i mean virtually every day she she told she said what the weather was she said what hours she was doing she often had to do shift work overnight time and she'd often put that in um, a lot of her days were very boring very repetitive which obviously you can't put in a book every day um but a lot of what she did out of hours was quite exciting and quite funny so um the other funny point of it being that she was actually born in canada so you can hear a lot of her canadian accent coming through in her writing and um so yeah it was it was very fun very funny stuff going through it so. what sort of thing did she do day to day um every day was different um, she would have um, shift work, as I say, sometimes during the day, sometimes during the night. If she did night shifts, she would be expected to go back to her barracks and work still. She couldn't, well, she could go to bed, but more often than not, within a couple of hours going to bed, um, the, the officer in charge of, of, the, of, the, of the Nissen hut would go and wake her up again, saying, Oi, come on, you've got to go on parade or whatever. So they were expected to do extremely long days, and so she was very, very tired. But uh, So, yes, her, her, job was, um, her job was very important. She was an RTO, uh, which means she, it's, it's a, I, th I believe it's radio transmission operator. She would sit in a little control tower and uh, tell the um, pilots to either take off or, or land if it was safe to do so. Um, and obviously that was, you know, an important job, depending on, you know, who was on the runway at the time. Where was she um, based? Um, she did her training at Cranwell in Essex and then went, was um, transferred to Bradwell Bay and did the majority of her service there. Well, that's out on the east that's coast, the just east up from coast. Clacton, isn't it? Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. It, must, it must have been very interesting, then, because she was only a young girl, wasn't she? she yeah, she was 18 when she joined, yes. It, but yeah. it must have been... Does it come out in the book how difficult it was being an 18-year-old in wartime? Because um, I imagine it, was, it wasn't easy. It's not like now, where you, you've got television and everything else. 
Yeah, I mean, yes, she did say in several places that um, there's nothing much to do here, so all we do when when, uh, when we're not off duty is go to the pub or, or go to um, the dance at the mess or whatever. So there wasn't much to do. Um, and it does in places come out, you know, she does explain that, oh, this is boring or I feel sad or whatever, especially when some of her friends went off and didn't come back again. And, of course, you don't know what's happened to them. No. And sometimes she felt, she, she actually wrote in her diary occasions, she actually felt that it was the right time for someone not to come back. And very, very sad, actually. In fact, when I, you know, when I typed up those particular bits, I really, I could really feel it. And all, OK, yes, yeah, she's my mum, so I've got that connection there. But I could really feel that sadness. And she kept saying, <laughs> quite often she kept saying how cheesed off she was. That was one of the little terms that she used, you know. Um, so, yes, it was very, very sad times, but mixed with very happy times too, so it was quite a, quite a mixture of emotion. OK, we'll take a little break out there, and I'll be back in just a moment. My guest this morning is Sue Edwards. She's written a book called Memoirs of a Waff, and uh, we're talking about that. It's, uh, as, as she said just now, she's just received it from the printers this morning, so it's hot off the press. Unfield FM, traffic and travel, with Wheeled and Tyres, your independent... That, so they're back to normal after that. My guest this morning is Sue Edwards. She's uh, written a book uh, which is called Memoirs of a Waff, and uh, it was her mum, and she did it with all the diaries and everything else. And uh, tell us a bit about the day to day life. It must have been very, quite austere, really. What was it like in the Nissen huts and things like that? Very cold, <laughs> extremely cold. Um, I particularly remember the first occasion when they arrived. Um, she said it took her hours to go to sleep. All they had was a blanket and a sheet, and that was it. Um, she was actually quite lucky, though, that she her bed was second from the end, and at each end of, of the Nissen hut there's a fire burning, so at least she had a little bit of warmth. Um, but in between each bed, you've literally got feet or two, if you're lucky, uh, between the next ones. There's no privacy at all. Um, that must have taken some getting used to, I would imagine. I don't Especially think for a young girl. I'm not sure you do get used to it. I'm not sure you do. It's, um, I mean, she had so many colds and flu and God knows what. She went to the doctors a lot of, you know, quite a few times. She went with, to the hospital with laryngitis and had to stay there. This was all on camp. Um, but, yes, she, she, she suffered a lot of, of, of illnesses because of the cold. She just could not keep warm. Um, they had, um, like, trench coats, I guess, as part of their uniform, which they could wear, but not the sort of thing you want to wear in bed, I guess. <laughs> Well, no, but I, you know, I can remember back when I was young, people used to put coats on beds, didn't they? They put anything on the bed just to keep warm. Yes, you yes. Know. It's very strict, though. They were, you know, the rules there were very strict, so uh, it's not clear exactly what she was allowed and what she wasn't allowed on her bed. Was she good at keeping the rules? No. <laughs> <laughs> No, quite often she would flaunt them, and quite often she had to wear a hat absolutely everywhere, and quite often she either left it behind or took it off because it made a head itch, like a hat does. Um, but quite often she was put on jank, as I think it's called, because she was caught not wearing her hat. And, uh, and she had to do either go off and peel potatoes or do whatever for quite a few hours because of that. You know that mistake, mm. um, and little other little things like not not saluting an officer. These these silly things were, were rules, and if you broke them, you had to you know you had to pay for it. Is there any salaciousness in there? Would she have lots of boyfriends and things? Oh like heavens, that? yes. She did. Very much so. Yes. Does she tell you much about it? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have to be honest, quite a lot of it I've missed out of the book <laughs> because it's a little little bit, uh, not below the belt exactly, but um, yes. Risqué. Risqué. And also, you have to be careful in a book not to mention people's names. Mm. So, for, for data protection, um, I understand that you can mention people's names, but I've only mentioned Christian names, nothing else. Mm. Um, it doesn't matter if people have passed away, you're, you're allowed to do it. But if, if somebody is still living, you have to be very careful. With something like this, it's difficult to know, isn't it? Exa well, it would be impossible. Mm. The amount of people she met, it would be impossible to find them. So, um, But, yes, yeah, she did have many boyfriends, and she went into quite a bit of detail <laughs> about a lot of them. <laughs> My poor dad. <laughs> yes. She probably hadn't met him then. <laughs> no, no, not till 1946. But, uh, oh, yes, yeah, she had uh, several on the go sometimes, yes. But, but quite often they go off, flying off somewhere, and she didn't actually them. know if they were coming back or not. No. That must be horrible. That yes. really must be. Yes. Was she allowed to write a diary, though? 
Probably not. No. In fact, on uh, one particular occasion, she actually wrote a note in her diary saying, I'm not supposed to be doing this because it's secret. Yes, yeah, it's the, the Official um, Secrets Act, isn't yes, it? Yes. Because she's revealing things that happened on camp. Exactly, yes. Um, I think if she'd been found out, they would have been confiscated, definitely, and that would be the end of that. Yeah. So... How far did you get, then, with these diaries? Because, it, I think, was it four or six years' worth of diaries you've got? Yes, I have. Uh, as I said, she joined in '42, and that's really the last diary I have is '47, which is after the war uh, they disbanded. So, um, But yeah, I, I believe she left in '46. And But it actually took a long time to, to, de to be demobbed. Um, she was at Bradwell Bay, and then I believe she went on to Acklington and Spilsby, and then slowly everything was demobbed. Um, but, yes, there's, there's uh, six about six diaries, plus the notes, um, plus I've got a lot of photographs, obviously. So, yes, there's a lot of stuff there. Um, so this is only part one? This is part one, yes. This is up to 43. So, yes, there's another four years to go yet. <laughs> but it would have taken a long time to do a book that big. I mean, it's taken almost two years for this one to come out. I haven't done it two years altogether. It's been in bits and pobs because my other work, you know, is all paid work. Of course, being a, a family thing, this was all, you know, for mum, mum for nothing. But uh, it's been brilliant. I've loved doing it. Um, but, yes, it's taken a long time. But it's been quite an eye-opener, actually. Quite an eye-opener. In what way? Um, the way they lived then, or what? The way they lived and how what happened in the war. Um, I stopped doing history when I was 15 at school, which is a real shame when I look back on it. I think, why didn't I? I found it boring then, but reading my mum's stuff now, I think, wow, this is interesting stuff. And that's part of the reason why I thought other people would be interested to read this book other than just, just, you know, just us. Is it difficult to get a book published these days? Or do you have to, no. have to go out and do it yourself? Exactly what I did. I did it myself. Yes. Um, Tom Acton at Quarry Printing actually printed the book for me, um, which literally take a, took a few days. It's all digi di di digitally printed. I'll get my, <laughs> get my teeth in. Um, and uh, the, he sent it down to Brighton, where it was uh, bound. And, um, and yes, it's, it's very, e well, relatively easy if you know who to go to, yes. So the next thing you've got to do now is distribute it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, we're, um, well, the main place, hopefully, I'm going to distribute it, is we're planning to have a launch party at, um, at the late night shopping evening, which is the Friday the 10th of December. And um, a lady called Carrie, who runs the hot barn in uh, Olive's Yard, is, is hosting it for us very kindly. And um, so we're having free mulled wine, mince pies, and absolutely everybody is welcome. Not just to come along and have a look at the book, if you just want to come along and savour the atmosphere. Um, the Hot Barn actually is, incidentally, one of the oldest buildings in Uckfield. It's a lovely, lovely building. Um, so we decided to have it there, and we're inviting absolutely everybody. If you're interested in the war and want to come along and look at the book, then that's fine. But you're going to get your mum to sign some of the copies? She is. She's coming along. Hopefully. Oh, she's going to go along? Crossed. Yes, she's coming along, yes. Oh, that would be great. Fingers crossed. She's not, she's not um, terribly well nowadays, to be honest, obviously. She's 87, bless her. Um, still living in East Greenwich, as I said, but, um, but she can't walk very well at all. She needs a frame. And um, her memory is going, so um, that's another reason why I wanted to get this book done, because, uh, well, she can appreciate it, you know. But, uh, but yes, hopefully she'll be there too. Um, I'll keep your fingers crossed, because she's actually waiting for a, hip oper for a, a knee operation. So um, everything crossed, she'll be able to come and, and sign the books and say a little bit. So uh, right. yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. So if somebody can't wait until the 10th, where can they get the book now? Yes, we have a website, uh, which is obviously all the W's, WAF Memoirs, all one word, dot co dot UK. Or if you don't have a computer, then um, just give me a call on 01825 761 890. And I've got all the books at home and I can post, post them off. How much is um, the book? The book is £6.50. Oh, very reasonable. And uh, postage is another two pound fifty. Yeah. So if someone uh, is local and wants to pick one up from my house, then that's fine. But if I have to post it, the total charge would be nine pounds. Right. But if they go to your website, they've got all the details there. Yes, but yes, that's right. And they can actually purchase it from the website. Yeah. Um, there's a PayPal button to just press. And away nice you go. And, nice and easy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, thanks very much for coming in, Sue. Thank you. And I uh, hope the launch goes well. Thank you. And, uh, I, I, just looking at it. it, looks a superb book, Thank you. and it's called Memoirs of a WAF, and that's where you'll find the details. It's um, the website is called WAF Memoirs. So thank you. Thank you very much. It's Uckfield FM. It's uh, what just after half eleven. Here's Maria Moldai. <laughs>